Hello guys, this is Lydia, the lifestyle coach, and welcome to another live feed. And we are ending eating disorders using nothing but your brain. And that means binge eating, that means bulimia, that means body hate, food obsess obsession, the constant hamster wheel that goes round and round in our minds, always thinking about food and worrying about food and being, you know, guilted and beat up by ourselves about our, our bodies and our food choices and trying to be in control all the time. And all of that messiness that happens with food, it continues to get worse over time. That is what we are showing women all over the world how to be completely free of, how to unlock their own cages so that they can be able to be normal eaters and to have a meal and move on and to be able to eat something and not feel bad about it and to be able to actually be healthy and prioritize their health instead of trying so hard to be healthy in a way that's actually making it worse and how to stop pushing up our set point weights to just have relief around food. So hello, so fun to see you guys on today. Hi, hi, so fun to see you guys pop on. Feel free to comment and say hello and ask any questions and make any comments or whatever you like. Likes, hearts, all the good stuff. Um, it's so fun to have you guys here and especially live. And for those of you listening to the playback, hello to you too. So we're gonna talk about a topic today that is really confusing for a lot of us as we're on this journey of trying to become healthier, but then we start as we try so, so hard to become healthier, it's like it's this slippery slope where things are going wrong and it seems like everything is getting harder and we have more and more health issues come up and all the things that we're doing that make us think that we're becoming healthier, it's like the harder that we try, the worse that it gets. And it's this phenomenon of feeling like a hypochondriac. So a hypochondriac is somebody who is really anxious, overly concerned with their health, thinks that everything's wrong, right? Like this is somebody who would go and get tests over and over because they swear there's cancer in them or they, they swear that something's, you know, happening or they swear that they have this disease or they're, you know, looking up symptoms to see, is this me or is this me? It's somebody who constantly thinks that they're sick and is pinning all of these issues on themselves, right? And so that's what a hypochondriac is. And we don't set out to be that, but we're going to talk today about what's actually happening, what's actually happening when we try to get healthier, when we feel like we're in this battle with our bodies, because when we try to get healthy, we become less healthy and all the anxiety that comes from actually seeing things go wrong. And this is a legitimate thing that happens. And so we're going to pull back the curtain today and I'm going to share exactly with you guys what's truly going on here. So feel free to comment if you've had this experience as well. And we're going to walk right through the exact process of how this evolves and then what to do about it. So you can step into a place where you're truly healthy and you're calm about your health and you're not worried and that sense of freedom and peace where you can be present in your own life. So you start out truly wanting to be healthy, you start this health journey, maybe you make a declaration, maybe it's a goal of yours, and it's a legitimate desire to be healthy. And so we start thinking, okay, what are the markers of health? Well, I would be this certain weight if I was healthy. This would be my healthy weight. M you know, my ability, what I'm able to do. You know, maybe I want to be able to have a certain amount of strength or a certain amount of flexibility. And we start putting together these markers of health. And then there's more than that, right? It's, there are so many ways to know that you're healthy. You can, you know, look at your heart rate and your blood pressure. You can look at your hair and your nails. You can look at your skin. You can look at your mental health. And this idea of health just continues to grow and grow and grow. And we tend to get more and more detailed as we go along because we become sort of obsessed about health, which feels like a really good thing at the time. It feels like something that is positive and it feels like something that is leading us to a better place and something that's very accepted in the world, right? We look around and look at all these people striving for health and if I'm striving for health, then it would be good for me too. We're very rewarded for that, especially when things change cosmetically. So we get a lot of compliments when we become thinner or when our you know, hair or skin looks a certain way or when we're able to do something and it's an identity piece as well. It's I'm a healthy person. You know, I'm I'm healthy and I go to fitness classes, but now I teach fitness classes. Now I'm expert at health. Now I'm a nutritionist. Like these things start to escalate. And so I know that in my own story, I started getting into the details of like blood tests and, you know, other markers. So, you know, you can test your blood glucose. And so for instance, I wasn't diabetic when I had my eating disorder and I would 
get blood glucose tests, which were quite expensive, and I would literally prick my own finger and draw my own blood and test to see where my blood glucose was at because I wanted to know if I was in ketosis. That was something that I was shooting for at one point in my health journey, in quotes, slash eating disorder. And so it started getting more extreme. And then, you know, you start doing hormone tests. Well, I want to make sure that my hormones are in just the right place. You know, I want to know that I can be proud of that. I remember there was something that I got obsessed with for a while, which is the CRP, the C-reactive protein. So this is a blood test that you can test for inflammation. And I prided myself in I'm eating a, a low inflammatory diet. I don't eat anything that's inflammatory. You know, inflammation became the enemy of inflammation causes cancer and inflammation causes disease. And I'm just going to eat in a way that keeps my inflammation really, really low. So I would do all of these things in my diet and my exercise to keep inflammation real low. And then I would go and I would take these blood tests. And every time I took a blood test, my, you know, the, the CRP test came back more and more, you know, in a, in a better place, right? A better marker that I could be proud of. So I could look on paper and see, wow, I am like the healthiest person in the world. Like, look how far I've come. And it's all of these measures to measure our progress. And then as we're on this journey, unexplained things start happening that are very confusing. Because remember, we're on a health journey, but then weird stuff starts cropping up that perplexes us. So we start having cravings and cravings for things that are so counter to our identity now because we're healthy people, right? We start having these cravings for sugar and processed food and, you know, fatty things and carbohydrates. We start having cravings for the very things that we are telling ourselves are, are villainized, are not okay to have. And then our body starts changing. So I know that on, you know, my health journey, I tried so hard to do everything so exactly aligned with my ultimate identity with health, with my ultra health. That's what I called it. Ultra health. That was my journey of life. That was my high horse. And I would have really strange things happen. For instance, I would eat healthy all day. And then by the end of the day, my stomach was so big and bloated and my my body started changing like i started even if i had something that was healthy like a piece of fruit i would put on weight really really quickly and it was all just sort of like that midsection of my body like the last place that i wanted fat to be in my body which was that lower stomach area and we start feeling these extreme hunger and cravings we eat lots and lots and lots of kale, but we can't get full. Then we start adding protein to it and we can't get full. Then we think maybe we need something more satisfying. So we get a healthy yogurt out and then we don't feel full. And then we put some granola on the next yogurt and then we don't feel full and nothing satisfies. And so we look at this and we have this dichotomy of I'm a really healthy person that does healthy things. And there's all this stuff that seems like it's symptoms of not being healthy. Bloatedness, exhaustion, hunger, cravings, lethargy. And then with this dichotomy, we think, well, it can't be the way that I'm eating because I'm really, really healthy. And then we start thinking that everything's wrong. This is where we start going into this hypochondriac mode because we start thinking that everything's wrong. And I know that for me, there was this idea of can't be eating too little. That can't be the problem because if I was eating so little, I would be losing weight. And I was trying so hard to force my body to be thinner. I was cutting my calories down and down and down to a place where I was working out a lot. I was cutting down my calories where it was pretty much at zero. It was like I wasn't eating at all. And I still wasn't losing weight. And I just felt like in this complete battle with my body, why won't you do it? But it's like, well, I've got to be eating less than I've got to be working out more because it doesn't make sense that I'm not losing weight. So I had this idea, well, it can't be the way that I'm eating. I can't be that I'm eating too little. If I was eating too little, then it would result in weight loss. So it must be something else because I'm so healthy. And then I became the expert. This is the next phase. We become the expert. So now 
we're not only learning about health and nutrition, but we're learning all about disease and inflammation, and we're reading all the books. We're getting certified in health and nutrition, fitness. We become a yoga instructor. We, you know, go on these retreats. We know all about all the things that can go wrong, and the more that we know about all the things that can go wrong, those things start happening to us. And so we have this identity of health that's in the foreground. And then in the background, it's this ongoing journey of, well, we've, we've got to figure out what it is. So we start going to alternative doctors. You know, we, we go to the doctor, we get all the blood tests, and nothing comes back as, you know, a red flag. So we're like, well, it, it must not be mainstream medicine. That must not be the answer because there's obviously something wrong with me. I feel awful. I feel so tired. So we start going to all these alternative doctors and, you know, maybe they know something more. Maybe it's an energy thing. Maybe my energy's off. Maybe, you know, it's my hormones are off, but, you know, mainstream medicine just doesn't look closely enough. So I need to go to these alternative doctors. Maybe it's I need to go deeper into my meditation. You know, something is off with me spiritually. And so we we're trying to prove that we're healthy and that we're okay. And part of that is to really believe that something is fundamentally wrong with us, that there must be some disease, there must be some imbalance because it can't be what we're doing or eating that's making us unhealthy. It must be some other unexplained thing. So we go on this long, lifelong search. And we've seen women that have searched, I mean, over 40 years to find what was off and they become experts in everything and they think they have everything well you know it's probably an autoimmune disorder you know it's it's probably lyme it's probably lupus it's you know it's it's probably you know something with my thyroid and these things start stacking up more and more and it's this idea that it's anything but the food and this is what often is happening in the background because we think that we must be healthy because of how we put this front to the world and to ourselves because we do we do eat healthy we eat healthy all day long we have a green smoothie for breakfast we have a salad for lunch we have another salad for dinner we have all organic snacks we spend so much on our food we do all this prep and what we're looking for in our minds is all the reasons of why we're healthy because we want to be that so badly and what we're not looking at is all the stuff that we're not counting because we put everything in our app and we look at all of our macros and we look at all of our calories and make sure it's okay. But then we start putting out of our minds what's happening more and more, which is, well, it was after 10 and the kids were in bed and I got out the almond butter and I just had scoop after scoop after scoop of the almond butter. And then it really freaked me out that the bottle was gone and then I'm just not going to think about that. And we don't record those calories. We don't record our binges. We put them out of our minds and we minimize them. We say, that was so weird. That was so weird. And that's just so not me. And because we don't feel like it's us, then we don't really look at it. But look how healthy I am. Look at how I got up the next morning and I ate so healthy. So it must be something else. It must be the hormones. It must be the thyroid. And our biggest priority is to be healthy. And we're becoming more and more exhausted. Because the harder that we fight to lose weight, then the, the weight gain starts. And it's going the opposite way. The harder that we fight to have abs and that flat stomach, the more bloated we, we become. The more that we fight to have energy and vitality, the worse that we feel. And then it's not just this hypochondriac idea of searching for an idea or searching for what must be wrong. It becomes a true reality. Then we get the diagnosis of an eating disorder. Then we get the diagnosis of things being off with our thyroid. Then we get the diagnosis of, you know, something, you know, being very truly wrong. And we look at our lives and we say, how did this happen? How did I let this happen? I was trying so, so hard to be healthy. And then we think, well, it's probably not the food. It's probably that I'm deficient in something. And then we start on the supplements. And we wake up in the morning and we just take lots and lots of supplements and we research supplements and we start selling supplements and we start becoming an expert in supplements. And then we have this whole a supplement regime where we don't feel like we can get going in the morning until we have all of these. And it must be some imbalance. Now it must be some, some mineral. And then we start cutting more and more things out of our diet. Well, maybe it is about the eating. Well, it's the gluten 
gluten is the devil. Let's get the gluten out. Let's get the dairy out. Let's get the processed foods out. And then the food allergies start. Then as we're trying to be so careful and healthy, we try to eat gluten again. And now all of a sudden we have an allergy and reaction to it. We try to eat dairy again. We binge on the very things that we're trying not to eat. And that starts really freaking us out because now despite trying to be so healthy, we're gaining weight, we're having more and more diagnoses, we're feeling more tired and exhausted than ever. We feel like we're gonna have a mental breakdown. We can't you know, ever have a quiet moment in our minds because we're always obsessing about the next thing and what food I'm gonna eat and what's the right thing and what can I eat at this point because now I'm suddenly allergic to all these foods. What is going on? So, Here's what you need to understand. This journey for we must be healthier, we must be thinner, we must be more obsessed about food and supplements and health is so often the very problem with what makes us less and less healthy. And we have this culture where we hold up this idea of if you can just exercise enough and eat little enough, and be healthy enough that you're gonna be invincible, that you're gonna live forever, that everything's gonna be great and you can look however you want. And the reality is, is that the harder that we try and the deeper that we dive into this restriction and this obsession, that our bodies fight back. And our bodies start creating all of these signals, this exhaustion, these allergies, this horrible feeling around food is our body saying, you're doing something wrong. This is not natural, this is not okay. This is not the way to live. That's why that mental obsession starts. And so what I didn't realize at the time is that most often it is all about the food. All of the symptoms that I was experiencing, so many of the symptoms that the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women that we worked with from all over the world that come to us thinking that they have an, an autoimmune disorder or diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder or thinking that they have food allergies, they come to us with this whole long list of all the things that they think are wrong with them. But so often it is about the food. And I'm not talking about the food as in like, well, you should eat even more organic things. I'm talking about the relationship with food. Because what happens is when we have this distorted relationship with food, number one, it causes a huge amount of stress. We wake up in the morning and we're stressed about eating perfectly and we're stressed about if we're going to binge and we're stressed about doing everything perfectly and we go over and over and over in our minds of the right thing to eat. And then we actually have a meal and we don't feel satisfied about it and we don't feel good about it and we continue to feel hungry and we're stressed about that. And then we're questioning what we had for breakfast and lunch and dinner all the rest of the day. And so it's this constant sustained high stress over something that you must interact with every single day, which is food. And that stress causes a huge amount of exhaustion and symptoms that very much look much of the time like an autoimmune disorder or something very wrong with your hormones. And on there's the stress side and then there's the physical side. So what I didn't understand at the time, because there's this idea, like when I had my eating disorder, I didn't understand that I was teaching my body to gain weight by starving it and forcing it the way that I was. I didn't understand that I was trying so hard to keep my weight so far under my set point where my body fights to be naturally, that it was fighting back, that any amount of anything that I would eat, it would pack on as fat to protect my vital organs, which is my stomach, which is right in the middle there. My body shape totally changed because my body was trying to protect my vital organs because I didn't have enough fat. I, I didn't realize that I was creating this rapid weight gain any time that I would binge and go, you know, fall off the wagon. I was teaching my body to be unhealthy. In the pursuit of health, we give strong signals to our body to teach it to actually be unhealthy, to teach it to have all of these symptoms. So you want to look at a couple of questions. Are you actually eating enough? The reason that I could never ever lose that weight is because my body was fighting so hard to keep it on because it did not feel safe because my relationship with food was so distorted. Are you eating enough? Are you trying to minimize your food to lose weight? Those two things alone can trigger all of these health issues and feelings and all of these scary symptoms coming up. Three, 
Do you have food you are eating that you are not admitting? Really take a deep look here. When you look at what you actually ate in the past week, are you only thinking about all the healthy meals that you planned and meal prepped and all the supplements that you had and everything that you recorded in your app? Are you leaving out the scoop after scoop of almond butter or peanut butter late in the evening? Are you leaving out all of your kids' processed food and snacks that you eat at midnight? Are you leaving out the three times that you went through the, the fast food drive through at three different places so you wouldn't be recognized over and over? And then you tried to hide it from yourself. You're literally trying to hide from yourself while you're binging on fast food. You black out. You don't remember it. You go on autopilot. You eat it really, really fast. You check out of yourself. You're not in touch with your body. You throw away the wrappers and public dumpster. And then you walk back in your house feeling awful and then waking up the next morning like with this amnesia as if you're this very healthy person. Do you have food that you are eating that you are not admitting to yourself? I counted everything except my binges. I could look back at a year of historical data on my food tracking app and it was pristine, it was perfect. I hit my macros every day. I stayed under my calorie count every day on my app because I never recorded the 5,000 extra calories that I was eating three times a week and binging. So you've got to look at that. You've got to look at the reality of what's happening and not just the idea that we want to tell ourselves. So I'll give you guys some examples. I mean, we have had clients come to us. So, I mean, if you saw our interview with Lisa, I mean, she had extreme food allergies by the time that she came to us. Like, go to the hospital if she had lemon juice sort of stuff. She had very, like, real legitimate food allergies that had been developed. And she had had this really distorted relationship with food for many, many, many years. And what happened when she came into our program and got free, then... She didn't have to obsess and worry about binging about the things that could literally kill her. She didn't have to have that mental obsession all day that was making her so exhausted. She thought that a hundred things were wrong and like three things were actually wrong when she fixed her relationship with food. She still has extreme food allergies. We have women come to us all the time with extreme food allergies. A lot of times those are developed because of the way that we interact with food and how our body fights back but she can have calm and she can have peace and she can be satisfied with what she's eating and still leave out the foods that would kill her if she ate them. And she doesn't have to worry about having a drive toward those things. She's now totally free, not just physically, but mentally. So body changes. I mean, we have women all the time that come to us and say, there's something truly wrong with my hormones. I'm gaining all of this, you know, visceral fat. Like my body shape is totally different than it used to be. You know, maybe it's, you know, menopause. Maybe it's a hormone imbalance. And they think it's all these different things. But guess what happens when they actually fix their relationship with food and are normal eaters and eat in a calm way? Then their body doesn't feel the need to pack all of this extra visceral fat right you know around that middle to protect their organs they can actually have a body shape that is truly theirs that isn't a reaction to trying to defend them from this pursuit of health which is actually wrecking their minds and their bodies we have had so many women come to us that were either diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder or self-diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder that had all of those symptoms go away when they fixed their relationship with food, when they weren't stressed all the time about food, when they weren't binging, when they weren't purging, when they actually became normal eaters and were able to truly nourish their bodies and be healthy. All those symptoms went away. They thought that they had to take all of these supplements, hundreds and hundreds of dollars of supplements every month to just feel okay and have energy throughout the day. And it was always this fighting battle. And they were able to just go off of all their supplements when their energy and their vitality came back. They could wake up in the morning. They could go to work. They could take care of kids. They could do everything that they needed to and then come back later in the day and still have energy to organize drawers and to clean out garages and to do creative pursuits and to finish. We literally, in the past year, have had three women graduate from our program, Eating Disorder Free, that finished books no part of our program is, now we're going to finish your book. 
this was just a natural result of a project that they had been working on for one of them over 25 years. And she finally had the energy to finish her book. We had three women in just the last calendar year. That was just a natural result. We've had so many women clean out garages. We had um, uh, Catherine who uh, graduated, I mean, years ago now. Um, one thing that she said in her interview is she had this to-do list that had been a decade. This was literally a 10 year old to-do list that she got done within a couple of months of graduating our program because she didn't have an eating disorder anymore and she had all of that energy back. The brain fog, this is something that we see so often. You know, women come to our program saying, you know, there must be something just very wrong with me because I, I have this constant brain fog. Like I can't remember things, like I feel really frustrated, like I'm not recalling things, I forget where stuff is, like I, I'm just really struggling mentally. And as soon as that constant food obsession and that round and round and round in their minds with the guilt and the stress and their body in fight, flight or freeze mode, goes away because they can relax around food, that brain fog lifts and they feel so, so, so much better. This is the sort of thing that we see every day. There are legitimate food allergies, there are legitimate autoimmune disorders, that's still something that happens. But one thing that you've got to examine is how much of what's really happening does have everything to do with the food. I'm gonna give you guys one last one. And this is not something that we ever coach somebody to do. This is something that this woman did completely on her own because we're just here to show her how to end her eating disorder. This is a woman who like deathly allergies, like her throat would puff up and her lungs would get tight. And she, you know, had to spend the rest of the day in bed and take all these supplements to try to save herself from a certain kind of food that she would try not to eat and try to you know make sure it wasn't in anything and when she got free of her eating disorder and she worked with us it was literally about four weeks into her journey and she didn't have an eating disorder anymore she was super calm around food and on her own <laughs> i just want to say we did not coach you to do this on her own she's like i feel so different she's like my body feels different my mind feels different and she tried she tried it she ate the thing that she thought that she was deathly allergic to, and she was fine. Again, this is something that she did on her own and then just told us and celebrated. She was totally fine. She's like, I had no idea the power of my mind. I had no idea that my extreme fear of this food, that my obsession about this food, that the way that my body reacted to it because I was so stressed about it looked like an allergic reaction to me. And once I could be calm about it, I could just eat it and be fine. So here's what you need to look at. What if you fought the battle with what was actually causing the problem? We coach women that have spent 35, 45 years of going all around the problem. It can't be the food, it must be the hormones. It can't be the food, it must be the supplements that I need. It must be some deficiency. It can't be the food, it must be that I need the right diet. It can't be the food that I'm... What if you actually fixed your relationship with food and all of that stress was gone and all of that obsession was gone and the binging and the restricting was gone and you were out of that yo-yo cycle that is so hard on our bodies and you let your body heal. It's like you've got your castle and you're always looking for some new kingdom to fight that was never a threat. And you've got this one kingdom that's literally like, you know, throwing fireballs at you. And you're just like, no, 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 it's not them. It must be someone else. You go to other kingdoms that like have nothing to do with it. You pick your battles. And I know that it can be hard to admit. I know that there is a relief in feeling like it must be something else because we don't want to admit that the choices that we've been making with food have caused us so many years of anguish and misery and exhaustion and so, so many thousands and thousands of dollars and all of these supplements and alternative doctors and all of these different diets and cleanses and retreats. It's hard to admit, but what is the alternative? Because we can keep in this place where we're hiding from ourselves. We can stay in this place where, you know, we don't want to look at our relationship with food, where we just want to like 
not admit to ourselves that we're anything but this very, very healthy person that everyone can look to as an example. But if we truly look at that and we say, you know what? I don't feel good about food. I don't feel good about my body. I'm obsessed about this all the time. I'm stressed about food every day. I'm binging, I'm overeating, or I'm admitting now to myself that I'm binging when I just called it refeeding or carb loading or whatever. We've tried to put it under the umbrella of like being healthy and fit. And if you truly look at those questions and you admit to yourself that, yeah, like my relationship with food is not okay. Please know that there is hope and there is help and there is a solution. We are the best in the world of what we do. We have women coming to us literally 25, 45 years of struggling every single day. And in a handful of weeks, they are done and free. This is something that we regularly, regularly see. And the beginning of that journey is to be able to have the foundation of freedom, which is clarity. You've got to take a real look at what's actually happening so that you can know what needs to happen to fix that. But it's something that we can't see what our brain is hiding from us. And so that's why we provide free breakthrough sessions where there is no judgment, where we get it, we've been there. You can sign up for a free breakthrough session at lifewithlydia.com slash apply. And we are going to spend that time with you and take you through a very specific process to get you the foundation of freedom so you can actually get the clarity of what's happening. And then we will give you the exact next steps that you need to fix this and to fix it permanently. And it might be something that we can help you with, or we'll get the clarity of exactly what is happening. And then with the power of that knowledge, then we'll know where to direct you from there. But either way, you're going to know how to fix whatever is going on. But you've got to get the clarity first. And so that's why we offer that as a free service. Again, you can go to lifewithlydia.com slash apply, sign up for a free breakthrough session. And we there's no judgment. It's completely confidential. And we are going to help you to truly understand what's happening and how to fix it. And again, this is Lydia, the lifestyle coach, and signing off. Bye, guys.